Oh, can I can I be the way that you feel like the both? Like literally you're a side of like yourself to like to both, like let's say daytime family or that recent family, nighttime it's like straight away, no. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because even then like like a lot of business stuff doesn't happen in, doesn't doesn't happen um, during daytime hours. Like Elon Musk, for example, you might think like, okay, the factory shuts down at five, work is done at five. No. Because now he has to go meet with um, with suppliers. Now he has to go meet with the mayor of some city or the governor of some state because they're thinking about opening up a, a factory over there. Or he has to go someplace else to secure resources. He has to do all, or he has to check up on his, on his plants. And especially if you're looking at like something like, like Musgrove, a worldwide company, um, when it's, 12, when it's, when it's uh, 11 p.m. here, it's 10 a.m. over in England where, they're, where they gotta check the production numbers. So there's always something like that going on. And even if you think, I'm gonna hire people to do it, Great, you still got to check up on them, you still have to supervise them, you still have to make those kinds of decisions. I guess you can think of like anything else. There's, um, uh, there's a thing called a, a zero sum game. A zero sum game means like, let's say you have 100 units of something, um, 100 units of life, let's say. Um, how, many, how much are you going to put into, into working? Um, I'm going to put 50 into working and 50 into family. Okay. Do you think that your family would be better off if you put 70 into this? Yes. Yeah, probably. So now understand that you're doing 70, and then that now becomes 30, which means that now your work is going to not be as good as it was, because couldn't your work be better if you put 70 into that? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. So then I guess we'll put 70 into that, and then, well, then you're 70, 30 in that direction. So life is like that. It's a zero-sum, in terms of this time, it's a zero-sum game. You can't, you know, create more time. You can create more money, but you can't create more time. And we have to find out what's important to us. That's why it's important that we find out what's important to us. Because of that. You know, time was infinite, of course. You know, learn how to play the flute. But if time isn't infinite, you gotta figure it out. What, but it, what is important to you? That's why I ask you these questions, because the sooner you can figure out what's important to you, the sooner you can pour your time into that thing. If you, if, if, you're in here and you say, I've got zero desire to have a family. I never want to have a family. Dude, problem solved. You know? But then if you want to have a family, oh God, because I gotta be, I have to have a family, I gotta put time into that, but I also have to provide for my family, which means I gotta put time into work. And then you understand, now you start to understand old people who say, there's not enough hours in the day. But when we're younger, we think, bored. Why are the days so long? <laughs> and then when you finally figure out the things you want to do in life, you start saying, oh my god, there's not enough time to do the things I want to do in life. You know, like for myself, like how, how best to pass the time inevitably becomes the question. And that's <laughs> more and more, it strikes me as a thing that's just unspeakably sad in a life that's as short as ours. Yeah, and when you get to that point, there's a, there's a bitter sweetness to it. There's a, there's a sweetness because it's like you fall in love with certain things so much that you want to be, you want to put, you know, you want to, you want to swim in a pool surrounded by those things, whatever they are, whether it's family, whether it's your work, whether it's your art, whether it's friends, whatever it is. But then there's this bitterness to it as well because you realize I have to decide between family and work or family and friends or art and my friends or my sport and my family. And then we tell ourselves this lie, which is, which is a lie from the very, very darkest and deepest pit of hell itself. There will be time. There will be time. There will be time. There will be time. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to devote my time to my career right now. And then that way, later on with my family, I can relax. What are you missing during that time, though? You're missing the first steps. You're missing the first recital. You're missing Halloween. You're missing all these kinds of things. And, you need, and then it hits you. You realize that you having to, that, that essentially you're buying those things. You're, you're having to, to, to figure out, well, this thing I'm building is more important than that. Oh, God, why do you have to put it that way, though? It's not. It might be more important than the first recital. So you can make it to the ninth one. It's not a terrible thing. It's not a bad thing. But when you realize it that way, it makes it so much harder because you realize you're, you're making your decisions in life that way. What's the most important thing to me right now? What's the most important thing to me right now?
I wonder how many of you guys are doing the most important thing to you right now. Anybody sitting here, any of you guys walking into this class today saying, this is the most important thing in the world right now. <laughs> Let's read about Seneca. I think it was um, John Paul Sartre tells the story. I'll leave you with this. Um, John Paul Sartre is a philosopher. He's also a professor. He's sitting around with some of his graduate students one time, and they're playing chess. And one of them asks the question, what would you do if the world was going to end tomorrow? And they're it's a big question. First one, what would you do? First guy says, I, I'd probably run down to the church and pray. And they ask the next one, what would you do? And he said, I'd go get drunk and go to a, go to a whorehouse. They asked him, what would you do? He says, I'd run home to my family and hang out with them. And they go around the room, they're trying to figure out what everybody would do. And they get to John Paul Sartre, he's sitting there, and he's playing a chess game. And they go, what about you, professor? What would you do? And he said, I'd finish this game. <laughs> Because whatever it is you're doing right now is the most important thing in the world. Why? Because you're doing it right now. Because you're making it the most important thing in the world. That doesn't mean there's nowhere else you'd rather be. That doesn't mean that, uh, that standing at the base of the Eiffel Tower right now and looking up at it or standing in the, sh in, the, in the shade of the pyramids right now wouldn't be more interesting to you. It would be, probably. But it's not the most important thing. The problem is when you make it the most important thing, but you're here. In other words, that's what, makes, that's what gives us a sense of longing. Ah, I wish I could stand in front of the pyramids right now, but instead I've had to listen to Scanlon talk about Seneca. I don't even know if he's talking about the quote anymore. And it's some, when I write a page, oh. Okay, that's not the most important thing. And that's what's causing you your distress, because you're not making it the most important thing. And if you don't make it the most important thing, you're going to always be distracted by something else that's the most important thing. And you'll be, you're going to be pursuing that your entire life. The sooner and more adamantly, that you can make what you're doing right now the most important thing in the world is going to, is, is, is the sooner you're going to become more fulfilled, whatever it is. It's not that it is the most important thing in the world. It's that you're deciding to make it the most important thing in the world. Whether it's wandering through a piazza, or slogging up a stairwell, or whether it's taking an order from, from somebody at McDonald's, or whether it's sitting in traffic, or whether it's standing in the shade of the pyramids, or God forbid, whether it's listening to scan and talk about Seneca. Whatever it is, if you make it the most important thing, you're going to have a life that is filled with the most important moments. And then you're not going to be pursuing it all the time. You're going to be there all the time, if that makes sense. I guess what I'm saying is finish the game. Others? I would finish this talk. <laughs> that means he thinks I should keep going. 24 hours, we got this. So Seneca was born in 4 BC. Right? <laughs>